Electronic toothbrush, but hold on. This is actually much more exciting than you'd expect for a teardown. Let's instrument the head with uh, a sensor and see what the vibration pattern looks like. And then let's tear apart the electronic and see how it was built. So I need to measure the vibration pattern, so I need a sensor. Uh, these are piezoelectric uh, transducers usually used to uh, generate sounds for like alarms or things. But they're also really quite good as sensors, so I'm going to affix it to the head here and take the output onto my oscilloscope, and from that we'll be able to look at the actual signal. Okay, you can see I've uh, glued the sensor on, and I use uh, very thin wire as much as possible when you're doing vibration analysis. You want to uh, try not to get the, your measurement system to interfere with the actual results. Let's uh, turn the uh, toothbrush on and take a look at the signal that comes out. Uh, clearly a sine wave, so uh, that's um, indicating it's probably some sort of rotating media going on in there. We're running at 337 hertz, and then if I press the mode button, it looks like it just lowers the intensity in this mode, and then the other mode looks like it's switching the same frequency, just it's switching the intensity. So let's uh, let's take this brush apart and uh, see what we can see about it. So here's the assembly. Um, looks like uh, even the simplest thing in this world must have microprocessors. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Uh, I'll de-encapsulate it, see what it looks like. There's a couple of uh, push-button switches, a small transistor, some... Uh, LEDs which uh, are here and I think this might be a voltage regulator down here uh, and up here is the actual transducer you can see they spent a lot of effort to make sure it was waterproofed it looks like it's potted as well so um, I suspect it's a little motor but uh, let's uh, take this plastic uh, housing off to uh, sort that down uh, coming back to the circuit board there's uh, those three integrated circuits let's take a look at the microcontroller first uh, as always, it's not marked in a way that uh, goes down to a specific data sheet, but uh, a quick bath in acid uh, exposes the dye, and of course here's the photograph. Uh, eight bond pads uh, with uh, two obviously allocated for power. Uh, that would leave six I.O. pins, that's about right. We have three LEDs to flash and a motor to drive, so uh, just about adequate for that. Uh, there's a, a ROM section, well in this case it's almost certainly um, some sort of uh, EEPROM or uh, flash memory. Uh, on the left hand side there. The RAM looks like it's on the uh, right. Uh, interesting enough, uh, the processor probably runs so slow they just laid it out as a bunch of gates and then all connected together so there's no real structure to the digital portion. I suspect that the upper right there is the uh, place where the um, oscillator is held. Uh, this uh, chip doesn't require an external crystal, it just does it uh, on chip. You don't need obviously a really precise frequency control of the uh, processor section. So. Uh, the only other thing you can find is the marking 3067C. That doesn't really come down to uh, anything I can find from a manufacturer. The other markings are kind of interesting. It tells you about the metal layers. There's metal 2, metal 3. Um, and you can sort of see how the uh, chip was produced. Uh, zooming back to the circuit board, on the uh, left-hand side we can see a voltage regulator uh, in a 3-pin sought package. Uh, if I uh, encapsulate that one, I get this die here. Interesting enough, there's actually five pads on it, so I suspect this die must get packaged out into other uh, formats, uh, perhaps where the feedback pin gets exposed so you can adjust its voltage. Uh, with only three pins, of course, I suspect this is a fixed voltage regulator. Uh, the upper two-thirds is a series pass transistor, pretty heavy metallization. Uh, one of those will be the input side, and one will be the output side, and below that, of course, is a uh, transistor. The logic on the lower portion is basically the control for the actual uh, voltage regulator that'll have the uh, band gap reference and such not, and uh, it'll of course regulate the voltage uh, nicely. Let's uh, zoom back out and take a look at the remaining uh, integrated circuit, and that's the uh, small little transistor uh, sitting on the right hand side. And if we pop open its photograph, uh, a very classic planar transistor. So with the motor just attached to a lap power supply, if I turn it on, it's kind of amusing. And that's typical of a vibrating motor. It's how it probably has an offset shaft. And uh, we'll just take the plastic off to prove that. So as one expects, this is a motor. Uh, and of course, there's this uh, offset weight. So as the motor rotates, of course, it will vibrate because the shaft here isn't balanced. So actually, a beautifully, beautifully designed motor, I must say. Uh, it's a shame all this stuff is just so disposable. But uh, there you go. Okay, well I've cross-sectioned the motor and then I polished it. Let's put this under a camera and we'll take a look at the uh, motor itself. So there's a lovely cross-section of a motor, a really tiny one at that. Uh, the uh, offset weight there is on the uh, left-hand side. That's what uh, was performing the actual vibration. The heart of the motor, of course, uh, in the right side. Uh, the copper-colored material is a very fine wire that looks like that's the stator windings. And then the actual rotor looks actually much more complicated than I thought it would be. 
Uh, it looks like it's a, a permanent magnet, and then it looks like it might actually be, even be an iron coronet or something. And uh, then, of course, you can see the, um, like, almost like an epoxy sort of holding it all together there towards forming the uh, bearing surface, I guess. You know, it's interesting for something so uh, pedestrian as a toothbrush. I spent such care here. This is a, a bit of foam, so the light, of course, doesn't leak through as it cycles through its three LEDs. Uh, really nice touch. So one final thing, we come back to that microcontroller. It actually is marked in a way that uh, tells me who made the part. If you Google that part number, you can eventually find out that it's the Ningbo Sigo Electric Company Limited. And uh, here's the front page of their website and they uh, specialize in, well, toothbrushes. And uh, that toothbrush matches the one I just tore down, except of course it was customized for the actual retailer who sold it to me. Now you might think um, patents, well, probably not actually, but yeah, believe it or not, even toothbrushes get patented. Um, and uh, I get a patent from this company. Uh, it's a Chinese patent. I'm not as familiar with the Chinese patent system at all, but um, I'm not sure if I'm looking at a design patent or a utility patent. But sure enough, uh, the patent uh, covers the actual construction of the toothbrush. And, and they talk about the motor here and how it's uh, been separated from the circuit board to prevent the circuit board from getting solder joint failures and uh, how they can make the head replaceable by doing that. And uh, so there you go. Even the simplest thing in the world, uh, as this electric toothbrush, uh, has just tons of technology in it. So uh, as always, if you want to take all the look at the photographs of this assembly, I uh, have on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com.